one of the next questions we have is actually about Gail. In your book, you kind of describe, it looks like you guys had a bit of a tumultuous relationship with each other. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? And what are your final thoughts on who Gail was as a person? It's very confusing because she was, you know, drop dead gorgeous looking, just like Bridget Bardot, really, I thought. And she was difficult to get on with for me um, in the beginning because she interfered in my job and she kept coming to my my desk and saying, who are you writing to? Show it to me when you've done it, when you've typed it. And if I ever tried to go and talk to him on his own, where he worked, he worked in the sitting room in the log cabin. It was a huge room. And he was in this corner with a grand piano. He had a grand piano and a desk in this corner. And the other corner was all his cupboard full of hundreds and hundreds of LPs he had and 45s and, you know, the 78s, all those records he had. And I, if I came into the living room where Frank was working at his desk or his piano, she would appear suddenly. She'd be there right by, you know, she would suddenly be there. So I, I could never talk to him on my own. And I wanted to complain about it, but I couldn't. I couldn't complain because, you know, it seemed like, well, how could I complain about his wife? Um, how would you take someone complaining to you <laughs> sure. about your wife? You wouldn't right. like no, of course <laughs> not. It's, a, it's, it's an impossible situation to be it put really, in. Yeah, it was. It was. So I bided my time. Later on, I found out when we moved to the, the office, Frank asked me to keep an eye on his manager, Herbie, and come back and report to him everything that he said and did. And I thought to myself, well, why do I need to keep an eye on Herbie when Herbie can tell him himself what he's doing and what he's not doing? And then it occurred to me, well, perhaps it was Frank all along that had asked Gail to keep an eye on me and to watch what I was doing and what I was doing and when I was doing it. And I thought he'd been the most liberal employer by leaving me alone to let me get on with my job. And... Uh, so I wasn't sure. But anyway, as far as she was concerned, she was canny, very, very canny. She made friends with this one in the house. Then when that fell through, she made friends with this one. Then it was my turn and she made friends with me. And I fell for it. She was very clever. I fell for it. I thought, oh, she likes me now. And I, I thought, you know, we were the best of friends. And then she would be talking in the, in, the, in the hidden bit of the house with Pamela Zerubica, we haven't talked about yet, Susie Cream Cheese. And right. Susie Cream Cheese hated her, I hated Gail, because she got Frank instead of her. And so when I saw them talking together and whispering together, and then they would stop when I walked in, I used to think, well, is Gail really my friend? I didn't know. I never knew. Even right. later on, when I came back to England and she wrote me loving letters, how wonderful I was and so on. I can't say it was genuine because once Frank stopped coming to London, she stopped writing to me. And when I published my book, she was quite unpleasant about the book. She didn't oh, like really. it. So I don't know. I thought we were very good friends. I, I, I was taking him. I really did like her. And actually, all through the period after Frank died, when all the fans were against her, I did defend her because I thought she was a wonderful mother. I thought she raised the children wonderfully. She was brilliant with the children. I thought so anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and the way she tolerated Moon and let her boss her around, uh, you know, it was it was very charming. And uh, she was charming. She could be charming. Uh, you know, it's a bit confusing. But I did talk about the log cabin. And when I worked for Frank, in the end, she was my friend and I liked her.